question. Like in the beginning, when you kind of giggle about popcorn and Coke, when you guys watch, is it because you guys see things from the bigger picture? Like how bad we're str struggling not to die, where in fact, everyone is guaranteed that ticket. Is that what makes it funny to you guys sometimes? Yeah. Do you want to hear the comparison? Yeah. I'm a little scared, but go ahead. <laughs> can I put my face off screen and you can just hear my voice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's talking about making love for the first time. Right. And um, having a climax with a partner. Right. We're just going to be very forward because we're adults. Right. And he's not talking about masturbation. It's, it's with a partner. Right. Know, so it's, it's very different kind of feeling. And he says, you don't know where you're going. He says, you don't know if you're about to blow up, die, sweat, vomit on the person in front of you. You have no, if you're going to bite him and kill him as it's happening. <laughs> or, you know, if you're just going to burn up. Right. He says, it's scary. And then after it happens... You know, and and you're still alive, and right. you look at each other. He said it's just a a first time physical and emotional merging that has no words. Right. And death is like this. Death is a, a climax in life where you don't understand what are you physically feeling, what are you emotionally feeling, and your head definitely can't wrap anything around it. It just can't. It's in survival mode, much like when you're making love for the first time. It's in survival mode. So true. <laughs> so true. So when you as a person look back on that first time, when you like to have some popcorn and a little bit of Coke and watch that action all over again and just know, wow, they think they're dying and something's really wrong or crazy, but they're about to have the time in their life. Right. For us over here, watching them transition, you know, all those crazy emotions they go through, it's not that we're making fun of it. It's just they're having the climax of their entire life. That's what death is. Right. It's the midpoint. Right. You know, it's not the ending. It's the midpoint of life. Right. And you guys know from the bigger perspective that we're going to be okay. Yes. Right. We're going to be more than okay, really. And that's why you can chuckle a little. Yes. How bad we fight it. Some of us fight it. Yes. And of course, of course there's times, you know, where people are crossing over and it's against their will. You know, when we're looking at that kind of thing, we're not sitting back with popcorn and Coke. You know, we're focused and we're giving them vibration and energy so that they can understand what that climax is in their life and what it's contributing not just for themselves but for the person causing the harm right and for the environment that's going to be left behind when this is over and what kind of mark that they're leaving right you know so i want you to know that we're not insensitive right no i know i get it i get it it's just like wisdom in life when you live something and you watch it play out you just know at the end of the day if everything's not okay it's not done yet because everything will be okay. Right. Right. Regardless of what it is. You know? Yeah. Um, do you guys ever have someone transition that's coming against their will that it takes some time to recover? Like they want to come back or they're struggling that they transition? The hardest transitions I've seen, Mom, are people who are committing suicide that really don't want to live at all. They're not committing suicide to escape the life, to end the life, to create ease, uh -huh. you know, as an answer. They're ending their life because they're destructive. They want to end life completely, like eliminate it. Right. And so they get rid of the body, but now they have their soul existence. And they don't want that to exist as well. So they're very self-destructive. But at the same time, at any time, if they're asking for something bigger than them, like, where am I? Right. What's happening? You know, that gives 
us, the helpers, a chance to come in and give them the answer that they're asking. Right. Well, here's where you are. And then they recognize that there's some kind of conversation and sometimes they don't even want to hear that. So they go in more self-destructive. And so we have a place where we can kind of put entities. It's like a, a healing space, a dark space. It's really beautiful. Okay. And you feel like you're alone, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a two part response. So you're, so if I hear you correctly, you're talking about people that commit suicide that would love for just life to go blank. They want to go into nothing. They're done, done, yeah. done with everything. Done. They don't want to go into another realm. They're just done. Those are the people <clears throat> that have the most traumatic time. Yeah, I would definitely say that. Yep, mom. Okay. That brings up a question for Mike and Junior. Are they still there? Yeah. Okay. When you guys transitioned, did you hope to go into nothing or were you just in that pain realm? Get rid of the pain in my head. This has got to stop. Um, Mike is taking the answer. Okay. Um, he just wanted everything to stop. Okay. And he says, at the end, I wasn't even in a state of mind to know that I had the opportunity to live elsewhere and to even be better. There was no hope. Okay. Um, but you know, in the core of me, that's not really who I was. That was my disease speaking. Right. Absolutely. That was my injury. Right. So when I got away from who I was, when you let go of your body, when, when he let go of his body, he said, um, <sighs> he just kind of spreads his arms. Ha, oh, it was peaceful. <laughs> Because I remember being there for a while before really recognizing that I had feelings and that I was feeling good. And of course, I wanted to accept that right away because at the bottom of my request, it was to feel good and to live. And Griffin is trying to say, yeah, but there's some people who are alive that take their own lives that don't even want to feel good. They don't think that they're worthy enough to even feel good. Right. Whereas Mike's brain just went haywire. Because of his injury. Yes. This is the only way I know how to describe it. Like your brain turned against you. More than a yes. suicidal thought, probably just like off your rocker, you know? He felt like he wanted to like eat himself. Like right. pull his teeth and just take it apart. You no longer could reside in your own body. No, not habitable. No. Random comment from Griffin. Wouldn't it be great if people were snails? <laughs> right? We could just leave the shell and take on a new shell. It'd be great. <laughs> Smart. Smart. That's funny. That's cute. Well, Mike, it's weird because, like, you you, you went haywire in, in retrospection when you look back at your human body. And yet we gave the analogy earlier in this talk about heart weighing more and that our society has twisted where mind weighs more. But now you're clear headed. You know what I'm saying? Even though you're not in your body, you're not in your body, your mind is the only way I know your soul is clearer. So that just shows that your mind had nothing, wasn't in, it took over you, but it wasn't who you were. You left it right behind you. Marshawn, A plus for tying that together. That was phenomenal. Oh, good. That was. That just, that was phenomenal. And he's saying, yes, that's what he was trying to mention before that the core of him. So your heart, his emotions right. really just wanted to be healthy and peaceful and be back to where he was. Right. He didn't want to destroy everything. Right. Wow. I mean, that just shows you because you're now who you were, who you were meant to be and you left your brain gone. Yes. It was no more important than your arm or your hand or your, in the end of the day. I mean, it wreaked more havoc, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He kind of turns his head like, oh, <laughs> yes, it did. I mean, for all the havoc it wreaked, isn't it amazing how much credit and how little credit we give the brain all at the same time? 
Because if yeah. you walk in with a cast on your arm, people will acknowledge it. If you're haywire, they'll go get your shit together. Even yeah. in 2017, we don't have a full grasp of mental health. Junior says it's coming. I hope so. Okay, how about your transition? Did you want to go into nothingness or you just wanted to lose the pain? What's that? Dylan said he just wanted to go into, he just wanted to lose the pain. He had a family, mom. Which is exactly his response is that he was just losing the pain. Right. He was killing the pain. He was just not killing himself. It just so happened to be that it took that much to get rid of the pain. Right. See, Junior, and it's interesting to hear the two of them talk to each other because Junior is like, you know, there is no comparison. We're having a really bad storm and my lights are flickering. Didn't we go through this last time? Again, you guys are having rain. We're having severe heat. Yeah. So, so I don't think it's going to go off, but it's flickering. So let me know if it's disturbing. Okay. But Junior said, um, you know, there's not really a, you can't do a comparison between two people with concussion injury. He says, but when I'm listening to Mike talk, he goes, that wasn't, you know, my pain. I didn't feel like I needed to like eat myself to crawl out. He goes, I don't think I went down as far as I could have, like, it's almost like, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> he goes, I'll tell you, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's admiring Mike for staying alive as long as he did. He really struggled with it for like years longer than anybody else. Junior says the sensation in your head is so beyond anything that you can imagine. And he says, and that wasn't something that was taught to me. He said, I was born with that. That's what made me such a good player. Mm -hmm. And to come up across pain like this, to quit, he goes, I just want you to know how much, how much that took of me to be able to do that. You're going to make me cry, but Junior, did you, um, when you got to where you are now, do you ever look back? You know how we'll fight with ourselves. Like we'll say, maybe I should have handled it longer. Maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. Or do you look at it now and go, wow, I survived a long time. That was some big pain. I look back at it now and he says, I couldn't see it for what it really was. I was too busy experiencing it. I had no idea how much bigger it was than me. Right. And he said, so when it like that, you're asking me if I had a regret based on that? No. In fact, I would say I, I waited too long. Right. I mean, just the life that you both lived, you and Mike, as far as all the hits and all the pounding and pounding, that must have been... You, there's no description for the pain you guys were in. There's no description. It's bigger than life. It didn't, it didn't coexist with life. Life was not possible with that kind of pain, is the way I look at it. You're right. That's why we're not living it right now. Right. He said I'd be alive right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean... It was probably a struggle to know what the pain threshold was to let go because you were taught to accept pain since you were little with football especially and not talk about it. He says that I was taught. <laughs> Is this enough pain yet God? Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So you guys were just trying to get relief from the pain so when you crossed over did you know where you were going, Junior? Did you have an idea? Did you have a... Or you were in too much of a desperation just to get out of your body? He talks about believing in a heaven. Okay. But he's trying to describe it. He said it wasn't like a God's heaven. Right. 
you know, that fit right into a religion. You know, I, he said I had a sense it was something much bigger than that. Right. But I called it heaven. But at the days leading up to his decision, that didn't weigh on my decision. My faith wasn't so strong that I knew whatever actions I took that I'd be okay. I didn't have those kinds of thoughts because my head wouldn't let me have those kinds of thoughts. It was just survive and and let go of the pain. 